Hello and welcome back to another mod review. Today I'll be covering the second area in Arch Thrones, the Cathedral of the Deep. In addition to my own thoughts, I have the notes of two Dark Souls challenge runners, Bob Lord and Yavez. As an introduction to the mod for those who missed the first part, Arch Thrones is a comprehensive overhaul mod for Dark Souls 3, offering a retelling of the Dark Souls universe with its own lore and enriched gameplay. Inspired by Demon Souls level structure, it introduces new enemies, bosses, armor, weapons, and spells. Players can explore non-linear progression through various thrones at their own pace, with new combat mechanics such as guard counters and perfect blocking. The mod features 17 new boss fights, new NPCs with fully voiced dialogue, and side quests for an immersive experience. It presents five reimagined worlds, drawing inspiration from the From Software mythos, inviting players to relive iconic areas and encounter both familiar and new characters. The second area of the mod, the Cathedral of the Deep, much like the war-torn village, is a vanilla-based area with small touch-ups across the level. Moving the bonfire closer to the entrance of the chapel doesn't make much sense because just like the vanilla, the beginning level is much easier than the end where there are more runbacks to harder enemies. Arch Thrones changes very little about the level design and the cemetery part, however they did change the enemies. Adding hollow man servants, dogs, cathedral and gamblets makes a lot more sense in the grave part of the level compared to the base game, especially with the more abyssal corruption that is present. Adding draglings to the rafter section and reskinning the Irithyll slaves is a better and the thralls we got in base game, and makes the area feel like the deep is seeping out of the cathedral. Right before we enter the cathedral proper, we get a reskin herald knight to look like a deep creature. The reskin is kind of janky, as you can see this clip doing its backset attack. Going into the cathedral, you can see a bloodborne brain sucker, which makes her a really unique enemy, and I don't believe any other mod has ported them from bloodborne. Speaking of unique enemies, the Cathedral Knights have been completely reworked and are an actual threat now. They have more moves from Vanilla DS3. They have moves like from the Crucible Knights, Bell Bearing Hunters, obviously their Cathedral Knight moves at from Dark Souls 3, and they have some AoEs and a grab attack. Moving on to where the giant will be. They added safety railings so you don't skip half the level which I think is pretty good design. And they ported some more Bloodborne enemies. Bob Lord pointed out that the Mind Flayers have some problems, and even after the balance patch came out, I do have to agree with that. Here's what he said. These enemies in general feel way too overtuned. Too much range, damage, moves, HP, etc. Hard to face and running away or past is difficult too thanks to their ranged Gravelord sword thing. The balance patch definitely made these enemies a lot better though. I fought them both pre-patch and post-patch and they are still very annoying to fight. The lower part of the cathedral is much more sectioned off and is full of small deep accursed cathedral knights, mind flayers, mind suckers, and some small bloodborne bugs that run at you. At least I think they're from bloodborne, I don't recognize them from any other game. They made this part of the level far more threatening and fun to play than in vanilla, and it just goes to show how much FromSoft dropped the ball with its level design for DS3. Because of the spike in difficulty, they added a bonfire just where the second giant would be in the vanilla. Running up to the boss fog where deacons normally are, we get some bloodborne enemies reskinned as deacons, which makes their fight more interesting. Crossing the boss fog, we get to see deacons performing a ritual just like in vanilla. But instead of them being in the fight, we get to fight a reworked Aldrich. This rework leaves him feeling like a mix of Phalanx and the vanilla Aldrich fight. He is now more ranged, however he still has some melee attacks and can still teleport. The biggest noticeable change is probably the visual design, now looking like a slug. You can spew a curse fog that pre-bounds pants would near easily curse you. Now it's more of just a get off attack. 
Overall, I didn't really like him, and I would have heard of Vanilla Aldrich's fight, since this new fight is kind of a bull in hell. Bob Lord agreed with me, saying, It really feels difficult to understand when it's safe to punish, when to back away, and when I need to prepare for him to attack. The boss doesn't make clear with consistent feedback to the player. This boss, in general, could use a rework. He feels generally on fun to fight, and his AI plays more like a blob than anything. Limited moves, occasional bullet spam, and half the engagement from the fight comes with the blob rather than the boss itself. I do agree with this. It's an interesting fight, but it's not a good fight. The next boss fight is where you would find the St. Biden in Vanilla. The Great Deep Accursed is a boss I assume is Sekiro based based on its attack patterns. The real boss is the camera, as the Deep Accursed has next to no health and very low damage attacks. The camera is one of the worst I've ever fought and you cannot really see what the boss is doing at all in melee. Bob Lord once again agreed with me saying camera lock is awful when under him and it makes it really hard to actually hit the boss. Punch over posture plus camera depth perception being bad equals not easy to hit. Could use like 25-33% more HP. Died very fast and barely got to see the boss. Now I believe in Sekiro when you fight bosses that are big like this it has the camera automatically zoom out and I think Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring does this as well. That would be something good where you probably would be better to zoom out the camera and try to readjust the boss size in any meaningful way. Then the last boss for the area is Saint Clint, which is found where Rosaria is in Vanilla. The run up to the boss is the exact same as the run up to Rosaria, but it has a small deep accursed instead of cross one on the rafters. This is a good change because you can't accidentally be knocked off by just walking. Sporting a Godskin Apostle Phase 2 as his Phase 1. Clement used to be a hard boss before the balance patch, now he's pretty manageable. Phase 2 is the one reborn with blood AoEs and spear rain to keep you from wailing on him. I like the change, I don't think most people do. It's a fine boss fight, but after the balance patch, I feel he could use some health. And that's generally where bosses are after the balance patch, they could definitely use some more health. Before the balance patch, they had too much health, now they have too little. I definitely think you can find that sweet spot in there. In conclusion, the second area of the Arch Souls mod, much like the War Torn Village, presents a blend of familiar environments with notable tweaks and enhancements. While some adjustments, such as relocating bonfires and introducing new enemy types, contribute positively to the experience, others, like the Reskin Herald and Mind Flayers, they require further fine-tuning for balance and gameplay satisfaction. Exploring the cemetery and cathedral areas reveals a mix of improvements, with notable additions like the Bloodborne enemies and reworked Cathedral Knights adding depth to the encounters. However, critiques from both personal experience and feedback from Dark Souls Challenge Runner Bob Lord highlight areas where enemy difficulty and boss design may need refinement. The boss encounters within this area just demonstrate a variety of influences, from Sekiro attack patterns to rage management fights reminiscent of Phalanx and the One Reborn. While well, some bosses like State Commit offer engaging battles with manageable difficulty post balance patches, some as the Great Deep Cursed suffer from issues like camera control and insufficient challenge. Overall, while the second area of Archrome's mod Showcases creativity and ambition in reinterpreting Dark Souls 3 gameplay. There remain areas where adjustments could enhance player in order enjoyment and overall satisfaction. With continued development and community feedback, Arch Souls has potential to deliver a compelling and immersive experience for fans of the Dark Souls universe far beyond what any other overhaul could.